and praise God it is once again that we've been given the privilege and the opportunity amen. to come together in this house of worship. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, and we ought to give God the praise. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I was, I was going to say I don't know about you, but I do know. <laughs> I, I hope you know yeah. that God has been good amen. to you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. By the very fact that we are yet in the land of the living. Yes. Amen. It's proof positive that God is good. Yes. Amen. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen, because, because of his great mercy and his power and his patience yes. that he gives to us each and every day. Thank Amen. God. He's given us yet another opportunity. Amen. Amen. To give him praise, to repent for anything that we've done, that we've come short of his glory. But most of all, he's given us another opportunity to say thank you. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank for all that you have done. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank Amen. You. So I would encourage you to take a moment. Amen. In your own mind. Yeah. Amen. Take inventory. Yeah. Amen. Give God the praise. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Once again, we're thankful to God this morning for the opportunity to come together that we might give him worship. We have a couple of announcements we want to make. We want to remind you that on this afternoon at 6 p.m. here at the church, we will be observing the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. Amen. So we invite you to come back and partake with us. Amen. Also, I want to uh, announce to us that we will have a celebration of life for our brother Emmett Carroll Amen. here at the church on this Wednesday, the 6th at 12 noon. Amen. Amen. Here at St. Matthew. Amen. We will lift up the Carroll family in Amen. prayer. Amen. Amen. That, that, that God gives them comfort in their time of bereavement. Amen. 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 Our God is a good God. He, even in times of difficulty. Yeah. Amen. He is yet good. Thank Amen. You. So we will give you over now into the hands of our music ministry and then we will come back with uh, prayer and scripture reading then we will hear a word from heaven. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for the Lord 
Romans 12, verse 1. can't find it that's all right I'll read it (laughs) amen amen I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the portion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, doing of his holy word. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is your kingdom, the power, and the glory. Precious Master, we come to you once again, Lord. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for another day present that we may be able to see this land of the living. God, we we call on you for your divine mercy and protection amongst this land. Father, we know that things are, there's wars and rumors of war. There's murmuring and complaining, threats of violence, threats of reactions that's unkind. But God, we know you control all. God, we ask that you intercede your peace and your mercy inside of people that they become more understanding and more tolerant to one that may not look like them, may not act like them, be on the different sides of the tracks than they may be. Because God, we all are your people. We all are your people. And God, we just need your presence. Now God, as we go into this political climate that we're in, let good come forth. Let good be the mindset of, pe- of the people. Let help and not hopelessness. Let hope for a better day be the mindset of the people. And God, we'll be careful to give you praise for all the model- marvelous works that you do. Now, God, let hands come together, black, white, brown, regardless of their ethnicity, their race, their religion, their political ideology. Let us come together and fulfill what you have already put in this great nation. And now, God, we ask for this house of prayer. Bless the people that are here. Bless their families. Bless their extended families that they may be able to, Lord, hear a word from you today that will make us all stronger, make us all wiser into who you have us to be for you. And God, we, we trust you, we love you, we adore you. We ask that you bless houses, home, marriages, children, grandparents. We ask you bless children going inside the corridors of the schools. Bless the neighbors. Bless the ones that are homeless. Bless those that's in jail. Those are in places that seem dangerous to their well-being. And God, we remain hopeful that you will do all things 
for good. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
I want to share something with you before we I was working on this sermon and I was had done so much research I was concerned how we would put it together and uh, I said Lord now you know I haven't heard from you yet on this thing so I need to hear from you and it was getting late I mean late because I was getting a little nervous that I hadn't heard from you but as I laid down and I rested and I began to meditate I got on my laptop and I just couldn't put it all down fast enough but it's a lesson for me because I share what I've learned uh, we're going to come from out the book of Romans actually but I'm all over the place because pieces begin to fit together. You have to use that. Yes. And it gives you great understanding. Yes, sir. Before we get into today's message, let us have a word of prayer. And yes. Heavenly Father, we have learned to wait. <laughs> yes. And this is what it's all about, is waiting on you. We come thanking you, Father, for another day for life, health, and strength. We now ask you, Lord, to purge us of ourselves, that you may fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may be guided in on it through it now, that we may lift your holy name with praise, glory, and honor. In Christ Jesus' name we pray to you, and all blessed name, amen, amen, and amen. In the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, this sermon today is based on faith, love and hope for the journey home I had a difficult time understanding why love and tribulations had such a mix art mix so I found something very important you see we as believers have newly gotten access to grace. Yeah. We have a new hope. Yeah. See, we were strangers without God. We had no hope. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but it's hard to handle something new if you've never had it before. Yeah. So he says, guess what? Yeah. It's my kingdom. It's my jurisdiction. I need to teach you how to act when you get there, what to say and how to talk when you get there. Yeah. Yeah, sir. All right. So he says, well, just like a sap and tree needs some nutrients to grow up, I've got a mix for you that you may not like. Now, it won't taste good, it won't feel good, but it's going to grow you up. It's going to grow you some roots because you're on a salvation road and you're going to get discouraged sometimes. And when you get discouraged, I want to be here, I want you to know you got to look to me for that. I don't know about you, when you ever take a journey, you you take a journey to some familiar place and you, you either got GPS, you got a map or your memory or something else. And then you may depart back or something happens along the way. But oftentimes we, we, we packed in a, some battery cables or, or, or spare tire just in case something needs. So where hope is and expectation is that we're going to get back to where we came started from. But you see, that's a little bit different here. This more tribulations are designed to strip you of your resources. Mm -hmm. So he says, because you are a new sap, and I thought about Peter, what Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, I'm going to lunch you out in the deep. Yeah. You see, when you have tribulations, you're out there almost like you have no life jacket. <laughs> so he cast you out there because he knows there's something in you to tell you when a tribulation comes, you're going to lean to what you know. You're going to lean to the resources you got. Yeah. All right. And then he told me, he said, now you need to remember that woman in scripture because she had an issue of blood, yeah. 12 years. She spent all that you had, but that's the point. You've got to let go of everything, exhaust every resource you have. Yeah. That's what tribulations are designed to do. Yeah. When you exhaust all those resources, he said, then you have to wait because I want the credit. You can't give the credit to nobody else. I'm going to wait because when you wait and I show up, you're going to learn something. So I'm, it's an education for us. Yes. 
Because when I do that, hope that was supposedly on the shore is a lively hope. It's got to move. So I'm going to move you to where you've got a living hope all the time. And that hope is going to grow. And as I inflict you with tribulations, as I put these things on you, something happens. You see, all of a sudden you've been depending on things that you've seen, but I want to get you to understand that those things are temporal. So now I want you to focus on the things that are unseen. You got a hope, but you can't see it. But I want to get to the point that you realize it, that you walk toward it anyhow, because nobody can tell you that the word of God is not true. Amen. And if he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it, and he'll yeah. see you through it. So when he sends these things to you, he said, I'm not going to call on the Lee brothers to let you know suddenly and immediately. I have appointed, according to 1 Thessalonians 3, I have appointed some things for you. So don't get concerned. Don't be moved because I'm going to send them your way. So don't, don't be surprised when they come because I've got a purpose. You see, heaven is a place for prepared folks. You are saved, but yet you're still dealing with the dominion and habit of sin. And in fact, we still wrestle against powers and principalities and wickedness in high places. That's part of our journey on the salvation road. So he says, I've got to call you to. I've got to call you. But if you wait on me, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to renew your strength. But I want you to experience what I'm doing. And if you experience what I'm doing for you, remember that the next time that it comes. Because I want to be a hope Upon hope, upon hope. That should be no doubt in your mind. You can't see it, but if I say it, it's going to happen. You're going to believe it even though you can't see it. Why? Because if you draw near to me, I'm going to draw near to you. And the Lord says in Colossians, he said, there's a lot of things you have to learn along this journey. He says, I want you to put on kindness. I want you to put on meekness and humbleness and forbearance and forgiveness but then he says above all those things I want you to put on love and I thought about that you see there's something special in the kingdom in the kingdom they speak one language the language of the kingdom is love so he says I, I want you to put on love because that's going to make it you have communion with a whole bunch of folks. You see, they tell me that sometimes they call Sunday the most segregated day of the week sometimes when it comes to worship. But in heaven, there's no segregation. There's no segregation there. So love is the bond of perfection. That is, that's what it does. There's, it's a communion. It provides communion between black and white and orange and yellow, whatever the color might be. There's no color designation there. But you got to learn that. But he says, when I launch you out into the deep, there's going to be some things that come your way that you'd rather not have to endure. And I remind you, my son, I sent him down and he suffered. And then when he was in the garden, he said, Lord, if it be at all possible, let this cup pass from me. We don't like to suffer. We don't like to go through anything for us that concern. But but he says, I want you to bound in hope, so I'm going to keep sending, sending your way. Now, that seems odd that you love me. But see, love involves suffering. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I began to look at this story here in this book as a love story and I say that because when you read about Paul contextualizing in the book of Ephesians he reflects that the love of God was before the foundation of the world so love is crucial for us as we journey home we're going to have some bumps in the road we're going to have some difficulties Amen. but he wants you to trust have faith in him and each time he does that and he brings you through it yeah. 
that's developing trust in him. And he wants to do that because we are a new creature and we need to learn because when we are out in the deep, storms gonna come up. Storms gonna come up and he said, you have got to learn to hold on to that anchor. I'm your anchor. Amen. But you haven't learned to grip it yet. So, you know, just like a newborn baby, you, you, you could hold it sort of loosely, but you haven't learned to develop a solid grip on it. Mm -hmm. Because when you develop a grip on it, it's like a solid rock. If nothing can shake you loose from it. Yeah. And so I've got to get you to that point. So he says, I want you to hold on to me despite what comes. So I'm going to send it your way until you learn that valuable lesson. Yeah. Faith, hope, and love. And Paul says, love is the greatest thing. You know, we hear that and we talk that, but God wants to personalize that. It's, we read it, somebody else teaches it or says it in Scripture, but he wants you to experience his love. And so what he does when you do that, you get happy. You know when the Lord shows up, there's some joy because you know that nobody else did what he just did for yes, you. Sir. And so we ought to, it's, it's, it's strange, but you can rejoice when he shows up. I, I was really fearful this last night that he wouldn't give me what I needed to say. And then he did. And then he did. I was so happy, that, and matter of fact, I said to myself, whether it be short or long, because I prepared for a long sermon today. <laughs> Longer than I've ever had before. Come on, Reverend. But Reverend Johnson said, you know, give it to me. So I said, well, Lord, I want to trust you, so what he's given me is what I want to say, and nothing more than that. Yeah. Amen. But I've learned the importance of love and that we're on this journey home. As we're on this journey home, love is so crucial. Amen. And he has to teach us that, but he has to inflict some pain sometimes. Yes, sir. And you know, we have to exhaust all resources before we begin to learn the lesson. Now, that's a tough, that's a tough thing for us to do because we got bank accounts, we got cars, we got all kinds of things that all kinds of things but our hope the source of our hope is God and it's conveyed by the Holy Spirit so if there there's an indwelling of the Holy Spirit when you decide upon yourself that you're going to do it your way you grieve the Holy Spirit you have to learn to let go and let God and so faith, hope, and love is so instrumental because they work together. Yeah. And you say, well, what about patience and what about long-suffering? If God is love, then everything that he is is contained in love. Okay. So it's likened to a, a cake with different ingredients. So when you get the cake, you get all the things that have come to put, to put together in the cake. Amen. So when you've got love, you've got all things that you need to have because he is love. And those things come from love. Yeah. Mercy and kindness and meekness and humility and forbearance and forgiveness. Those are the things that you begin to put on because heaven is a, a place where you got to know how to speak the language. Yeah, man. Man. This has been a short sermon today, but this is what I have. And, and b believe me, you, you don't want me to tell you how much I had, but I couldn't get through it. I, I was excited. I'm always excited when I get to see something that I didn't know before because I, yep. I have read different parts of the Bible, but it never quite comes together until he shows you how the pieces, yeah, yeah. pieces fit. Yeah, yeah. And now I understand that we're, we're on this journey, and, but we're not ready for the kingdom yet. And somebody, he's responsible through the Holy Spirit to get us ready. Yeah. And don't think that you're ready just because you've been saved. Amen. You can't make a child and all of a sudden he become an adult. Yeah. Because you are a new creature, the word says old things have passed away and behold things have come new. But see, in essence, it's, it's somewhat of a, 
prophetic in the sense that it's progressive in nature. You haven't quite gotten there yet. When you win the kingdom, yeah, for sure, yeah. it is all passed to become you. Yeah. All things have passed away. But while we are traveling on this road, you're going to have some difficulties that he purposely and intentionally send your way. Amen. So expect it and don't get concerned about it because Paul said, even when I'm troubled yeah. on both sides, I don't get distressed. Yeah. Even when I get confused about what to do, I won't give up. Come on, Amen. Even when I'm persecuted, I know I'm not forsaken. I may be cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Amen. So if you're going to understand you need to have hope in me and in me only, don't hope in that stuff that's temporary. Yeah. I know we have relied on stuff in this world to get by. Yeah. And today, it seems to be our last recourse is only when we have exhausted everything we have. But you learn a lesson in saying and understanding that you're going to a place where you utterly are dependent upon him for everything. Amen. There's no need that can't be met in the kingdom. Amen. And the stuff that you have, you can't take it with you. Yeah. So there has to be, if you would, some stripping. It's like stripping a piece of furniture with the lacquer on it, with the paint on it. You have to be stripped of what you have held on to, you see, because you are yeah. living in earth, but you are a citizen in the heavenly realm. Yeah. And so in the heavenly realm, that's where your home is. Yeah. So I'm going to intentionally move you away from thinking about that house that you're leaving. Amen. I'm going to move you from working thinking about that car that you got. <laughs> you may still owe some notes on it, but that's all right. <laughs> they can have it back. Because yeah. you won't need it up there. And that's why it's so important to let go of this earthly stuff because hope increases every time that he shows up. Yeah. When we wait on him, he's ex exclusive in what he does. So when you wait on him and he does something, he wants the credit. Yeah. He doesn't want you to say, well, my friend showed up and you know they saved me all this. No. Nah. God has been good to us. And we need to understand that no matter what we go through, every complication, every yeah. situation, all sicknesses, his love, and, and, and in the book, of, he describes it, Paul describes it as four-dimensional. And no, we live in a three-dimensional world, but he, he, he talks about the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. You can't get around. In other words, his love is immeasurable. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Love can handle it. Yeah. For God is love, and he will never let you down. If he tells you he's purposely doing something, he's got you covered, yeah. fully covered. Yeah. So you just trust him. Every time something comes, you ought to be able to say, our God, our own God. It's blessing me. Yeah. It's a blessing to have him activate, be active in your life. Mm. Do you know how much you appreciate when he shows up and you acknowledge that it was him and something, not somebody else? Yeah. I want him on my side all the time. Amen. I cannot make it without him. Yeah. And I sincerely say that because as we get older, the bodies get more infirm. And we groan for a place that we soon to go to. Yes, sir. But I tell you, he is the keeper of our souls, my yes, soul, and your souls. Yes, I want to thank you for allowing me to be short today with this sermon. And I hope that what I've said have helped somebody and will help somebody. Yes, sir. Um, now the doors of the church are open.
desire God oh, God so would be saved in me. Just what I now, could be, I'm glad I serve right now. the God of another chance. I'm glad I serve. Don't let this opportunity. say that we serve the God of a second chance but since our best that went up so long ago I'm glad he forgives me
says for you and I, those of us who are saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And names written in the book of life. There is a way that God expects us to approach him. Amen. There is a way that God, he said, all things should be done decently and in order. Now, I'm, I'm up here now because I've been waiting because I need to pray for some people. Amen, I do. I need to pray for some people, and I need you to pray with me for those. We've got grieving families. We've got families dealing with severe illnesses. I mean, in this house. We don't see their faces because they're going, as my grandmother used to say, they're going through. But while they're going through, we need to stand with and for them. Amen. With and for them. I guess I'm just old-fashioned. No, I am. I am. I know I'm old-fashioned. I don't believe in the rock and roll church. If God wants to rock you, he'll rock you. The Holy Spirit shows up, you might roll. But it won't be to a sinner's music. Now, we're all sinners saved by grace. Anybody here who never sinned, I feel sorry for you. Because the reason God sent Jesus was that sin murdered mankind. And he sent Jesus to save us from ourselves. Amen. He sent Jesus, not from somebody else. And I know everybody's worried about Tuesday. Can I tell you a secret? God's got Tuesday. We didn't come here to vote. We came here to worship. Because God's got everything under control. Don't you lose sleep worrying about how the votes are going to turn out. But if you didn't vote, lose sleep over that. If you won't speak, don't complain. And God gave every one of us a voice. And in this country, you have a right to vote. I've been wearing my little sticker. Yes, I voted. Almost came back early from the convention, but it got too good. And, and God told somebody, tell him there's another week. <laughs> I've early voting after this. Tell him to go on to church and don't worry about voting. I got that. God is good. Amen. He's an awesome God and he's worthy to be praised. Now, uh, I need you to do things right if you're going to be down there up here. Don't get quiet. It's my job. All things done decently and in order. If you want to keep coming up here, if you want to keep coming up there, do it right. When I was called to preach, I couldn't even come up here. And I was called to preach. But they believed that certain things ought to take place before you jump up and go too high. Amen. 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 I heard one 
elderly preacher tell me, son, don't ever go to a church where you're not a member and don't understand the protocol. Yeah. Yeah. And run to the pulpit so you can be seen. He said, because it's better to be asked up <laughs> than to be asked down. I'm sorry. I got my little broom. Is that all right? God is a good God, and there is a right way and a wrong way. And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not one of those people that, do, that will go along to get along. God's been too good to me. I should have been dead a long time ago. But he looked beyond my faults. And he said, this is holy ground. This is the place where God said he will meet his people. And we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So I have an expectation. Amen. I do. I got an expectation that we need to let God know how much we love him. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. That's why we come here. Worship is worth ship. Worth ship. That means tell God what he's worth to you. Tell, show me what you think about me. Show me how you appreciate me watching over you all night long and keeping you safe from hurt, harm, or danger. If you say you love me, show me that you love me. Show up, and when you show up, worship. Praises go up. Blessings will. Come down. We ought to praise him. He's been too good. Amen. I, I've been hooked up to all kinds of stuff, and they said they were trying to keep me alive. When they finally left me alone, God showed up. And that equipment they hooked me to, so they said, so I could breathe well enough to sleep. When they came back the next time, I'd taken it off and was snoring. Come on, somebody, because God gave me my lungs, and, and, and God can fix what's wrong with me. And if I trust him and never doubt, he will surely bring me out. Now, 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 yeah, I, I'm through. I'm through with that. I'm through with that. I ain't going to say that no more. <laughs> I shouldn't have to. Because I got to answer to him. For every one of you. Amen. No, no, I got a special responsibility. For every one of you. Pastor. Mm -hmm. man by the river yeah giving sight to the blind there's a man by the river yeah he he's giving 
giving sight, giving sight to the blind. Yeah. And if you're talking about Jesus, he's a friend of mine. If you're talking about Jesus, I want to let you know that he, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> he's a friend of mine. He's a real friend of mine. And if you're talking about Jesus, whenever, wherever, yeah. I want you to know that he's, 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 yeah. he's, a friend, a real friend, a friend of mine. Amen. Somebody say thank you. Amen. Somebody Amen. say thank you. Is God your friend? Has he walked with you down through the year? Yeah. Has he talked with you? Has he healed your body? Yeah. Has he saved your soul? Did he make you whole? There's a man by the river. I'm trying to let it go. He's a friend, a friend of mine. There's a man by the river. know that he's, he's a friend of mine. Bless you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. All right. We're in a season, my brothers and sisters, where the devil is challenging everything that's holy. Yeah. 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 Yes, he is. Yes, so God says, I give you this instructions so that you will know how to approach me and I can respond to you and let you know that I am God amen, amen. we thank God for Max Oliver Andre Mina Seth Scott yes. and Jonas Grimm today yes, sir. With us. amen amen God is good amen I, I pray that you will come back again, but let's bow in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we come now in the name of Jesus. And as we stand, God, I lift up my voice, and we lift up our voice on behalf of your precious saints. I lift up Sister Marie Carroll, who's been going through sickness of her own just the other day lost her son. God, we say lost, but Emmett was saved. And in order for a thing to be lost, you have to have no knowledge of where it is. The Bible says about the people of God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And even though we know that, God, the pain of separation is awfully hard when we lose our loved ones. I, I pray for Sister Whitfield in the name of Jesus. You know her struggle. But we just lift it up to you. I know you personally as a God who hears and heals. Touch God in the name of Jesus. And then God give us more grace. We may know how to deal not only 
with those that we know, but with those that we don't. Because we are your representatives in this world. Forgive our sin. Wash us. Cleanse us. Keep us in your way and in your will. We'll be careful to give you all the praise. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus for healing, for helping, for holding. And as we come here on Wednesday at noon to celebrate Brother Emmett Carroll's life, you be the center. You be the power. In Jesus' name, bless us all, God. Bless Reverend Johnson as he goes to his appointment. You know everything. You know all things. But you've done it. You've healed us once. You can do it again. In the name of Jesus, give us an obedient spirit, an humble spirit, so that we can be used by you. Bless every person who is a part of this nation. Take hold of this thing, God. Oh, I'm sick, and I know you are, of all the hate, all the division, all of the angry, hurtful words that we speak about people we don't even know. Touch God. Speak peace in the name of Jesus. You work this thing out as only you can. And we'll be careful to give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Sister Britton, I didn't forget about Brother Britton. Deacon Britton. We all need prayer. We all need the Lord's hand in our lives. God bless you. It's a little after 12. I try my best to stay on what God gave me. And I know there's, there's some things about yesterday that we all miss. But we're not out of this yet. Amen. Amen. So we can't go back to doing like we did when the, we could just pack out the house and do whatever the Spirit moving on us to do. But the Lord is telling us, if you love me, love each other. And if you love each other, care for each other. Amen. Amen. Care for each other. So we have to be careful even though we're have all faith in God. I got to love you enough to want to keep you safe. Amen. God bless you. Rem Carter, thank you for the word. Thank you for the word. I have many things that God has shown me about you and you'll see it when he reveals it to you and it's good Amen. the devil means what he does for evil but God will turn it yes, to our good yes, anybody believe that then won't you just praise God now and let him know you're expecting everything to work out and for him to get the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate you, though. I'm not like this all the time, but I am when I have to be. Amen. That's my brother. He's older than me, but I'm his pastor. So I'm responsible for him. Amen. I've got to love him. I've got to be there for him. I've got to instruct him. Because he's my elder brother, but I'm his father in the ministry. <laughs> and God will hold Melvin accountable. What I got, you're going to get. No, 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 you didn't hear me. 
I said, what I got when I was sick, you're going to get. Amen. Hmm. He's not a respected person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kim, baby, what you need, you're going to get. I like the way you keep coming to say thank you. No matter how hard it is to put one foot in front of the other, you show up. And God is not missing your faith in him. God is good. Amen. We're coming back this afternoon. I just had to get up. I, uh, <laughs> I got an answer to him. And he said, see to it that things are done decently and in order. Amen. Amen. So what do we come here to do? Wait, wait. What do we come here to do? Do what? One word. Worship the Lord. And he and he only is worthy of our worship. Amen. God bless you. Uh, I guess I might as well go ahead and get to the deacons. Oh, you got where you can get. <laughs> Come on up here. Sit down right here. Sit down right here. See, I, I like faithfulness. Amen. This, is a brother, this is a brother who has been sick. But he's showing up. And he not only shows up, he participates. And God gets the glory. This brother has been sick. Amen. Both of them. But God. But God. Brother Britton is sick, but same God over all is God who is rich unto all who call upon his name. God bless you. God bless you. Let's all stand together, please. Come on, boy.